Getting through transitions as fast as you can is often overlooked, but believe me, there is time to be saved. So today I'm gonna to be talking about bike to run and giving you my top tips for how to get through T2 as fast as you can. So we want to be able to get through transition as fast as we can. And when I started this sport, I learned really quickly that actually something as simple as changing our laces out can make a really big difference to our speed through the transition area. Believe me, there's nothing worse than running into transition with a competitor and then watching them leave miles in front of you because you're still struggling with regular laces. And that's where elastics can come in really handy. They do take a little bit of prep to get used to beforehand and it's worth spending time doing so. And there's a couple things that you need to watch out out for. Firstly, you don't want to tie them too loosely because then they can slip and maybe cause some rubbing and blisters in your heel or other parts of your foot. Conversely, you don't want to make them too tight because then the top of your foot can get really quite sore and pinched and usually you find out about that midway through the race. And finally, what I do like to suggest and I always try and do is do a little bit of a walk through in the house before you get ready for racing just to see how it feels and do remember to do that with your actual race scenario on whether that be with socks or without. Now that we've got elastic in our trainers, there's a few other things I picked up over the years that I like to do to just make the whole transition process that bit smoother. Now, firstly, what I like to do with my trainers is add a dusting of talcum powder into the shoes, just a really light dusting. And that just makes everything nice and smooth for getting your foot into. Admittedly, it makes much more of a difference if you're racing without socks, I find. But irrespective of whether I was doing a short sprint distance at my local club event without some socks or a long Ironman event and definitely using socks, it just became a good habit for me to add talcum powder in. So once that's done, the next stage for me would be to add some Vaseline or petroleum jelly just around the edges of the heel or along the front here where the tongue meets the foot. Just found that made everything a little bit slippier to get my foot in and just helped with the tuck too. And then the final thing that I did just to make sure that I was getting my foot into that shoe as quickly as I could was, as you can see here, I just flipped the very top section of the tongue over the last portion of my laces and it just gives you a nice bigger surface area to aim that foot in for, getting a quick transition. Now next up is our socks. And to be fair, they aren't for everybody, but as a general rule of thumb, I didn't use them in short sprint or Olympic distance races, but absolutely once I got into the half Ironman and the full Ironman event, I was adding some socks into my transition area. It didn't matter how comfortable I felt my running trainers were, I just didn't want to take the risk of getting a really unfortunate or nasty blister midway through the run. And it also makes sure that once you get back into training after your race, you don't have something making matters worse in your sessions. As we talked about with the run trainers themselves, I would just dust some talc into the sock and then to further speed up the process of getting my foot into the sock, I like to scrunch the sock up just a little bit like this, just to make things a little bit quicker when I got to my shoes. Right, next is the helmet. And although taking your helmet off in T2 might sound like a really simple task, there are a few pitfalls that we can fall into. And they are getting your sunglasses and helmet on in the right order in T1. By putting your sunglasses on first, they're underneath our helmet straps. And if you've forgotten to do that, you can take a moment once you're settled and out on your bike during the race to just take your sunglasses out from over the top of your helmet straps and pop them underneath. And the reason for that is, when you get into T2 and you're all in a rush, we pull our helmet off really quickly, and I've been there, your helmet and glasses all get tangled up. And then it's just a mess. And what we really want is our sunglasses just nicely sitting there on our head so we can run out of T2 and use them on the run. Right, next up we've got numbers and number belts. And depending on the race, you don't always have to have your number visible on the bike and the run. Sometimes you only need it visible on the run. And you've got two options there with how to do that. One, you can just have it attached to your race kit, which is basically on for the duration of the race. But a lot of athletes don't like to do that because pins can sometimes come undone and they can pierce you or they can just ruin your race kit, to be honest. So the second option, which I usually opted for, was to use a number belt and pin your number onto the number belt. 
Now don't laugh at me, but I did have a bit of a system for getting my number attached to my number belt. And I personally always like to use four safety pins, just evenly spaced across the number. I saw so many athletes losing numbers because they tore off their number belt because they weren't pinned on properly. It sounds simple, but it definitely happens. And then I also like to just move the number up the number belt a little, just so there was a little bit less of it able to flap in the wind. And again, this was something that I often did. I scrumpled my number up because it would stop it from flapping in the wind. There's an awful lot of complicated physics surrounding scrunching paper, but believe me, as an athlete, I figured out it just stopped the number flapping around. So, do not be fooled by transitions. There are plenty of details to focus on. And hopefully by incorporating some of those, and more importantly, spending some time in your training, getting used to them, then you, I guarantee, will be faster through T2. If you've got any of your own tips, then please drop them in the comments below. I'd love to read about those. Hopefully you find this video really useful, so hit that thumb up like button. Don't forget, click on the globe and subscribe. And if you want to see some other videos about transitions, well, Mark has done one about T2, which you can find here, and I did one about T1, which you can find here.